Hi, my name is Ethan. I am the marketing operations manager here at Web Canopy Studio. And in this video, we'll be covering everything you'll need to know to get started building landing pages in HubSpot today. Well, let's jump in. So let's go ahead and jump right into our HubSpot portal here. As you can see, I'm using one of our company's test portals. Uh, so think of this like a sandbox account where it's not connected to our actual official domain. So you may not see any reporting data here. Uh, and there's going to be a few things that are probably a little bit different. But think of this as somebody who's basically just starting from scratch or they already have just a couple themes downloaded and they're trying to figure out exactly what they want to do. So once you're in your HubSpot account, you're just going to hit the marketing drop down and then you are going to want to navigate to landing pages. And once we are here, we're going to hit create landing page and then we're going to give it a name page name. This is just internally. You can change what is going to be visible for the external page name once you get into the settings. Uh, and I'm just going to name this one landing page demo and we're going to go ahead and create that page. So depending on what themes you have installed in your portal, you'll actually have those available to select here, depending on how many you have or depending on what you've downloaded to this point. If you're looking for a theme, I recommend that you would go into the marketplace and download one of our themes. We have a variety of different themes. Some are industry specific. Uh, we're actually launching a new theme, Landing Page Studio Pro, which will actually be specifically tailored to landing pages that are designed to convert. So that'll be available in the HubSpot Marketplace as well as all of our other themes. So if you actually go in here and you search up Web Canopy Studio and hit search, you'll see we have Studio Canvas, Studio Launchpad, Studio Flex, um, and that's just, just a couple, just to name a few. You can always actually filter by providers and you can go to, we should be down here at Web Canopy Studio. And you can see all of our different themes this way. So since we're in our test portal, uh, I'm going to just go through and select one of the themes that we already have downloaded. And I'm going to do, we're just going to go with Studio Canvas. So once this pulls up, I'm going to go ahead and set this as my active theme. And then it'll pull up the templates from that theme. So I'm going to go ahead and select our landing page here. Now, once this is set, We'll see we have all the different things. Uh, it looks pretty bare bones right now. So you can go through and customize all this by clicking here and selecting the drag and drop editor. Um, so we can add text, we can add images, we can swap images if we want to go through and replace this with, um, we'll go ahead and select our logo just for now. See how it looks. Uh, you can see that it, you can swap out uh, images like that. If you want to maybe move some things around the page, you can always drag and drop and change things this way. Uh, and then you can go through and check out the modules that are available with the theme. So in this case, we look on this left side panel here and we can see all of the modules that are included with this theme. There's 14 here and then there's 16 common modules as well. So you can go through and basically see how things fit on this page. So we can test out the feature module. We could add that by just dragging it and throwing it in here. And then we can select an image or we could even do an icon. Uh, it'll add an icon in here and then we can add some title, a title text, some description text. And if we like the way that looks, but maybe we want to have multiple features, we can hit this clone option and you'll see it'll clone like that. And then we could even do that again. And then that way we can have three individual ones and we can talk about three specific features. Now you can do whatever you'd like with that. If we go back, we can check out some of these other modules that we have available we have uh, like the headshot card here with this theme where if we want to include a headshot with uh, a name a title and some text that's all included you can go through and edit that here and you can include anything that's available so testimonial sliders there's a resource library if you want to do something very simple like add another image box you can do that here all of this stuff is available and then you can move them around the page. So like we talked about earlier, you can kind of just drag and drop to how you like things to fit. Uh, and it takes a little bit of getting used to, but then you can add it. So like now we have three images in a row here. We can even, we could probably want to make all of these match. So we would even clone this out and then maybe delete this and delete this. We would have two like that. And so you can do a lot with that. And it's basically very intuitive, just drag and drop 
select what you want to do. And then when you click into an actual module, you can go through and update it that way. Now moving on to the form. So the, one of the most important things that we, we cover this in a lot of our different blogs, a lot of our podcast episodes is making sure that you have the form on the page. Click on this module and then I'm going to select the form. Um, and then we can either create a new form by hitting this create form or we can actually just select one. So I'm going to select this webinar test form and then you can edit the form here on this left side panel. So if we want to include other fields other than email, first name and last name, we can add them in here. Where we say we want to add a new one and we could say maybe maybe phone number is that's usually a big one that we see phone number um, and we can go ahead if it's used in multiple places we can clone and edit this as a new form or we can have it update in multiple places and then we will go ahead and do that again now that we've cloned it hit the form content and then enter phone number and then we can make that required by clicking into here, make this field required. You can add hidden fields and you can add, there's also lots of stuff you can do with dependent fields as well. Uh, that's covered actually in a separate video that I've done in the past. You can find that on our blog. Um, it's a HostPod secrets video covering dependent and progressive fields. We go, I go in depth on those and walk through those as well. So once we have our form in place, the next thing that we're gonna wanna do is set up the confirmation once once somebody submits so there's multiple ways to do this and this is going to be something that you're going to want to whichever way you choose you're going to want to be consistent so whether it's leaving an inline thank you and then having follow-up automation in place to deliver an email if you're let's say you're using an ebook or a white paper you want to have that delivered through email you can you'll make sure in your inline thank you to say thanks for submitting the form then you would add something like uh, an email will be arriving in your inbox shortly and then you would include that file in the email or you can read have it redirect to another page so this if this is going to some gated content that lives on your website if you're doing any kind of private content that's um, going to be membership uh, something that's membership based is going to be like password protected or if you just want to have it redirect to a thank you page where they can download the whatever it is that you're offering them on your landing page, they can download it there. That's another way to do it. Um, so you, there's different ways to do it. Uh, there's definitely different strokes for different folks. Uh, and it all depends on what it is that you're delivering, what stage that people are at in the funnel. Because like, like I mentioned, including a calendar is going to be a big one. And that's going to be something where it's definitely going to be a bottom of funnel landing page where you are encouraging them to take action to book a call on your calendar. So yeah, just make sure that there's some consistency. So for like all of your top of funnel landing pages, you're going to want to have them, if, if you're redirecting to a thank you page on one of them, where that's where the content lives that they can download, then make sure that you're doing that across all of your forms. Or if you're doing it all through email automation and follow-ups, make sure you do all of them that way as well. And then once that is in place, you, it, the page will update on its own. But if you want to make sure that you, and you aren't seeing any of your updates, you can click this little click here option at the bottom and it will update. So we have our phone number, we added our inline thank you. I'm just gonna make sure that this is still here. And then we're gonna update that again. So now let's dive into the settings tab here. So once we pull up our settings, you can configure your landing page settings. You can include the page title. So this one, because it's not gonna be going live anytime soon, I'm just gonna say landing page demo. This would be the title of the page that exists when somebody Googles it. And then as you can see, once you update the landing page title, it'll actually fill out the content slug for you. Um, and so if you're doing stuff with the specific with keywords, you can always change this, or if you want this to be something different, if we just wanted this to be just landing page, we can do that. Uh, it doesn't have to match the title one-to-one. -one. It'll just automatically update when you're changing this the first time. Then you can add your meta description here. So we'll just say insert meta. You can select the campaign that it goes to. So we'll add it to our test campaign. So we want to append any of the analytics and revenue to anybody that converts on this page. We want to be able to view that in our campaign tool. So we'll actually have that appended here. You can include a featured image. So when people are sharing this, whether it be on social 
or they're actually just sending like a direct message to somebody, this will be the image that shows up. So I'm gonna go ahead and select our logo again just to keep things simple. So now when this is shared, this will be the, the image that shows up with the page title and the meta description sometimes depending on the platform that you're using. And then you can go into some of the advanced settings as well. I wouldn't have this for a landing page specifically, but you can have these private, you can have private content where there's registration and password required. So if you were doing like any kind of membership based, someone signing on for membership and it was a private page, you could select this and set the password or you can include it by adding them to a list when they sign up, when they fill out that form, they get included to a specific list, which gives them access to private content that you have. Um, I'm going to keep this as public. And then there's some additional code snippets if you want to include any header, footer, HTML, and then you can include some dynamic page, you can add data sources. And then you, if you'll end up going through and you design your landing page, you've edited the H1, added some pain points, and you're just not in love with the way that it looks. You can always go through and actually change out the theme afterward. And this is something that people don't realize a lot. So they end up basically doubling the amount of work that they have to do because they build a landing page. They don't like the way that it looks. And then they have to rebuild that whole new landing page on a separate template. You can just use a different template um, by going through and selecting an option that you have. It may not convert over one to one, depending on if you're using like a web canopy theme versus somebody else's theme. Uh, their landing page, it may not convert one to one with what you have built on the original page, but a lot of it will be brought over. Um, obviously, the styling won't be there with CSS, but a lot of it will be brought over to that. The, the main content will be brought over. So I'm going to go back to our page settings here. So once you have all of these settings in place, I always recommend for any page that you're launching, just to just before you before you publish, make sure to click this optimize tab and just go through and see Everything is good to go from an SEO standpoint. Um, obviously, there's something here with the header. It says this page only has a single H1 tag. Uh, it, that doesn't exist because this is we didn't say this as an H1, it looks like. So you can make your edits here, or you can go back to the editor. Um, and in this case, I would just want to go here and just update this to an H1. I would save that, click here, and then I would go back to my optimize tab. And then we can see that that SEO recommendation has now been cleared. There are no more uh, red flags that have popped up. Everything looks like it's good to go. And then we can go into our publishing options. We can schedule a publish or we can publish now. Um, and then one more step before you publish is you're going to want to go through and preview your landing page. Uh, always make sure that you're previewing your landing page, checking links. I would, I usually, what I tend to do is actually open it in a new window. Uh, check it that way. That way you can share it to somebody else too who's not in your HubSpot portal. So if you want to check it on your phone, there is a mobile option here. But I always recommend sending the link of the when you open it in a new window, sending that link to your phone and checking it on your phone. Because it's not always one to one with the, the window that they have here. Sometimes there's things that are just a little bit different from what it's showing in the HubSpot previewer. Uh, you can preview as a, con as a specific content or contact. So like we mentioned with private content, if you wanted to show that something is hidden or you're using smart rules based on list membership or smart rules based on like location, anything like that, you can actually um, preview it as a specific contact. So we could select this and we could pick, pick one of our contacts and see what they would see on our page. They have the tablet option as well. Um, and then you can copy the link, like I mentioned, and send that uh, and view it just on any browser. You don't have to be logged into HubSpot to see this. Once everything looks good to go, we say, yep, we love this landing page. We are ready to publish. You just hit back and then publish. Uh, this will go basically to our uh, one of our staging domains. So I'm just going to go ahead and publish it now. So we can see the page that we get afterward. And we can make sure by clicking the link that it's good to go. I'm going to click it and yep, it looks good. Uh, you can always check the optimization stuff later. You can do some some testing as well as A-B testing. You can uh, actually directly promote and create social posts from here. You can create ad campaigns directly from this. And then as this page starts to get views and conversions, you actually get some reporting built in here on this page specifically. So that just about wraps it up. Uh, I think that I pretty much covered everything. You can obviously go into some of the analytics. Maybe we'll do that in a separate video. There's a whole bunch of analytics that you can do with the page as well. And you can add it to all different kinds of reports. But I do think that's it. And now you should have a great landing page in HubSpot that you can use to drive traffic and generate leads. This is Ethan from Web Canopy Studio. 
and I hope you enjoyed it.